Hello and welcome to Brighton and the Furious Goose Creative Studio. Uh, my name is Patrick Morrison and I'm, I'm the founder and lead designer here at Furious Goose and we're recording this video for Regalier magazine. So we are a luxury British made and slightly rebellious accessories brand. We make um, silk scarves and pocket squares and fine accoutrements for sartorially elegant people, but uh, those who aren't afraid to be a bit different. We're all about furious colour, uh, fierce design, beautiful print, sustainable production, uh, but we're also, yeah, at the core of it, we're about exuberance and curiosity. I think for a lot of uh, luxury accessories and the various brands that produce them. It's all about the past and um, certainly for menswear it's about restraint and elegance and uh, soft muted colours certainly not standing out from the crowd and um, yeah we believe basically that accessories should be joyous and fun and uh, you know if you can't have fun with your accessory I think you're doomed and uh, yeah we believe the brighter the better. Uh, and if, in case you don't have it, I've got um, a copy of it here. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, it's uh, an honour, a bit of a surprise. And um, yeah, it's definitely a first for me. Um, and I, you know, I think ultimately, uh, although I'm all over my Instagram, uh, I'm actually a little bit uh, shy and would prefer to have the budget for models, paid models on, on all over my Instagram instead. But yes, it's a lovely uh, honour to be on the front cover of the magazine. Who knows, next top Vogue. Um, so I think I took a bit of a long and rambling route to where I am today and I like to think of it as the metamorphosis of a butterfly. I think I started off as a fine art studying caterpillar and then I went into a cocoon of professional graphic design before bursting out as the fabulous Furious Goose uh, that you see today. Um, yeah, so I started, um, all I wanted to be was an artist I went to university and studied fine art printmaking um, and uh, yeah, even way back then I was printing onto my clothes uh, but I had no idea where that would lead, um, certainly wasn't considering fashion. But yes, with a lot of uh, art students after you graduate you find uh, out you need uh, cash and quickly. So I, I kind of, you know, tried my hand at graphic design. I absolutely loved it and uh, that actually became a career of mine for 15 years. Um, uh, and I'm actually still doing a bit of that branding high level consulting now uh, but it, yeah at the time I learned so many skills and professionalism that's really helped me build the brand uh, but you know underlying it all graphic design is not fine art uh, and um, yeah I was looking for to just kind of reclaim my uh, creative roots and um, I was kind of shopping and I saw this incredible fabric on a pair of shorts I had to buy them ridiculously expensive and I realized that the fabric had been designed in the software that I've been using as a graphic designer uh, for decades uh, and I thought oh my god I, I, mean, I can do this so yeah I had a go and um, when I got back my first silk uh, proofs I literally I felt like I'd come home it was absolutely uh, joyous experience completely uh, life-changing and I then you know Thought, right this is it I produced some scarves and I haven't really looked back um, and that was about five years ago and you know since then I've produced over a hundred pocket square designs 13 collections um, yeah it's definitely uh, a way of life from, from now on um, but yeah a meandering route to get there um, but actually looking back every stage was important because the design career was is instrumental in our signature look uh, and how we produce the scarf so um, yeah a rambling road but uh, the right one I think uh, 
and um, yeah really there is not a, a specific process it depends on the, the type of design the creative route that we're going but it, it does essentially break down into several stages and although uh, we create um, most of our designs are, are very digitally produced they do actually start with pen and pencil or ink on a sketchbook just to scribble down ideas. Um, so yeah, it roughly breaks down into the idea stage and then we take uh, you know, the sketches, the rough drawings of layouts and um, take them into the computer, uh, which is where um, all of that graphic design knowledge uh, comes into play. Um, we use a piece of software called Adobe Illustrator, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and it helps us create those crisp graphic shapes and, and the beautiful flat colors we use. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of what actually that means. This is what you see, uh, which is the design uh, as it looks and as it prints on silk. But actually what goes on beneath that is the hard work in the computer. So you can see there, that's the sort of wireframe view of how we design. And um, so a huge amount of work goes into each design um, behind the scenes, as it were. Um, so once we've done that, we, we really, we hone all the details and we hone the layout until it's absolutely perfect. And um, that can, you know, take weeks and weeks of design work. And then the final stage is coloring. And that is um, pretty much actually one of the most important stages, um, one of our, the things we're known for is our colour work and um, it can actually take longer than the design to get it all right. It's a little bit like cooking a meal, a, a sort of seven course meal or, you know, depending on how many colourways you're doing, you know, 15 course meal with every ingredient has to balance the other one. No ingredient can be out of place. Um, so, yeah, it, it's quite a complicated task and um, yeah, so each design has to balance so the colors and then you have to look at the whole collection and make sure that they sit together as a collection as well so yes it's a, a complicated job <laughs> but it's certainly a, a fun one our current collection is called the dragon and it's really about it's a meeting of east and west about these fabulous mythical creatures, the dragons. One of them is the Oriental dragon, which I think we're all familiar with, and the other one is the South American or Mesoamerican flying serpent god Quetzalcoatl. I uh, don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. Um, and yeah, they're, they're basically the, the dragons are talismans of luck uh, and bring knowledge and power. And I think uh, for 2020, we could do with all the luck we can get basically. <laughs> so these are kind of talismans. I'm actually wearing one of them here, which is, uh, we call a lavalier. It's basically a bow tie that has grown to the, um, the logical extremes that a bow tie can grow to. Um, this is for men and women really. Um, but we're really pushing it for the guys. Um, it can be worn in many ways, but um, yeah, I'll show you some other designs from the dragon collection. So this is just one of them, I'll hold it up to you. This is the South American dragon in all his glory. So you can really see the color work that goes into this um, piece as it's all balanced. And also the quality of our print. Um, one of the things when you're looking at print is the front and the back should be as close to possible, uh, close to identical as possible. And um, I think you'll agree that this is a pretty fine example. Um, this one is actually the Chinese dragon. We've actually incorporated marble paper into this um, design. I can get it the right way up. So you can see the marble paper there in the texture of the silk, combining with those um, vector graphics. So we're really pleased and really excited about this collection and um, it's about to launch. Um, it's actually a little bit late because of COVID, but we're nearly there. So yeah, it uh, should be out in time for Christmas. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, we don't really have specific stories behind each collection. Every collection is approached from a completely different angle. Um, some of them are just pure emotion. Uh, we have one collection called The Four Letter Words, which is a typographic exploration of love, lust, fury and pain. And that's really just exploring emotion through type and colour, rather than a specific story. But we have three pillars that underpin everything we do design-wise. Pillar one is beauty, and that, you know, the highest quality design. We really pour a lot of love and uh, attention into our designs. Um, pillar two is quality, and that is, you know, the best quality materials we can find, the quality of production, but also sustainable production and ethical production. And then pillar three is curiosity. Uh, and this is where we draw our subject matter from, and it can be anything from humour or risque humour even, right down to, you know, sort of science. We have a whole collection about the planets of the solar system, which explores it right down to data, what the planets are and their stories. So the, the, the story gathering is a wide range of inspiration, but yeah, it's not necessarily each one tells a specific story. Uh, I don't really have favourite scarves, it's almost like asking you what's your favourite child. Uh, they're all my babies, um, but uh, I do have some particularly uh, fine ones that I like. Uh, but I'll just show you a few examples. Here we go. So it's, this one is probably one of the ones I like the most. Um, and this one is uh, based on the snake eating its own tail called Robberus. I'll just unfurl it for you. So it's, I like it for several reasons, but I think I love the color palette and I love the, the bold graphicness of this. And I think the print is absolutely exquisite, completely double-sided. And I think this one is a, a real joy to wear and we get a lot of compliments wearing this one. So that is probably my favorite uh, at the moment. Although I'm particularly living for these um, Lavaliers, they're, they're going down very well and I think they're kind of different actually. So that's possibly a favourite, but this Lavalier style I'm also very keen on. Um, and also I love this one from the new Dragon Collection, which is just absolutely outrageous in terms of colour uh, and detail. I mean, it's a real hallucinatory experience. This one is the South American Quetzalcoatl God. Uh, and I think that is absolutely fabulous. The print has come out wonderful. And as you can see, it's really beautiful. So possibly this one might be my favorite. As you can see, I can't choose. They're all lovely. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I'm not sure exactly what the X factor means, but um, I think basically for us, what sets us out uh, apart from the competition is that real sense of drama, uh, design drama, you know, and colour, um, an exuberant colour um, that's kind of signature to our brand. It really comes back to how um, my circuitous journey to, to setting up Furious Goose and the design background I have combined with fine art. I think that gives us a particular sort of design aesthetic that is extremely bold um, and memorable. Um, and I, so I suppose that would be our X factor. That's obviously a massively important question. Uh, especially for us. Um, we basically, one of the biggest things that makes us sustainable as a business is that we make all of our products here in the UK uh, and we don't mass produce. We, you know, that really cuts down on transportation costs and carbon footprint, but also um, by not mass producing, there's a huge um, reduction in waste. We print digitally, so we really only print what we need. We don't subscribe to the model of printing thousands to get 
to get it super cheap and then try to sell as many as possible and then landfilling the rest. That's just not how we operate. So we print very low print runs up to about 50. Uh, and yeah, all made in the UK and hand finished in the UK. So it's, uh, and our printers also use sustainable methods. We, uh, they recycle, uh, they've set up their printing machines to recycle a lot of the ink they use, and this water-based ink. So the actual process is um, as uh, friendly to the water table as possible. Um, and the factories themselves are really lovely places to work in because I think sustainability is important on one side, but then ethical considerations as well are very important to us. And we can um, say honestly that our entire chain of production uh, works in good working conditions and is paid properly for what they do. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that is pretty horrific about luxury fashion is that it, you just don't know who's been making them and what conditions they're working in. Um, we also don't print on plastic or any of the poly, poly, uh, polyesters or nylons. Um, so it's really only natural materials like silk and cotton um, that we use in wool. Um, we're even trying out a new um, vegan shirt. We're making a shirt and it's going to be made in a socially viable um, factory in Plymouth. And it's made of uh, a very new type of viscose which is made from sustainably sourced wood pulp. Uh, it's going to be entirely vegan and 100% biodegradable. So those are coming as part of the Dragon Collection and it will be really exciting to see them. But yeah, so we really do take it seriously. We're trying to, to reduce our plastic use and we're trying to inv investigate and invest in new, new techniques and new materials to produce you know, the highest quality luxury, but um, that's humankind and planet kind as well. Smiling tips, how can you style a furious goose scarf? So I will quickly try to demonstrate just, I mean, I won't go into too much detail and this is a fairly simple uh, trick of how you can take one scarf and style it in two completely different ways. Um, so I've got one here. Uh, this is from the Planet Collection that I was talking about. I'll show you the design. This is um, Planet Earth. This is on a lovely merino wool. Uh, and yeah, so what one way of styling a scarf, super simple, fold it in a triangle like this and throw it around your neck. So this way you get a lot of scarf visible and it's quite flamboyant. Uh, a, you know, lovely way to show off the, the print. But sometimes if you want to kind of have a more toned down way of viewing the scarf, uh, you want to fold it up and roll it into a tube, which essentially you do by folding the corners in to the center and then rolling the scarf into a tube. Like so. And that way the ends don't fall out. And then you can just wrap it round. More like a necktie. Like that. I think that's a neater way of wearing the scarf. So those are just two ways with one scarf. That's really quick. Um, you can tie the corners together to make a bolero jacket. I mean, it's endless. You can make halter net tops, um, headwear. You can wrap it around your hair. You can put it around a hat. Um, there's endless possibilities. Um, pocket squares uh, as well are another thing to style. Let's see if I can show you that. So this is my favourite technique, this is it, the camera angle work. If you fold the four corners into the centre, like that, and then you fold the knee corners into the centre again, this is a little bit like 
um, making those fortune telling games at school. So you've got it like that, grasp the centre and pull it through your fist. And then you have a little flower and you can pull the pocket and the corners down like that. So that is a quick way of styling your pocket square. That's pretty amazing, I think. But yeah, the most important thing with accessories is just to play around with them, have fun when you get it. Just see what works for you and um, be imaginative. There's always a different way to fold a pocket square and um, there's always a different way to tie a scarf. And uh, yeah, just have fun with it. So yeah, that's uh, it from Furious Goose. I uh, uh, hope you've enjoyed it and seen a little bit of the colorful world of uh, accessories and how much fun you can have with them. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on our Instagram for uh, any new product drops and uh, tips on folding pocket squares and wearing scarves. But yeah, thanks so much for your time. Bye.